<laughs> Stop f***ing coughing, Matt. I'm filming a goddamn video. Muffle it or suffocate yourself or something. Good morning, folks. I'm Ryan Cruzy. This is Cruzy Originals, and on today's episode, we're going to be doing another cam install. It's going to be a little different, though. We're doing a cam install on an early model, so it's a cam plate upgrade and hydraulic tensioner swap, all fueling stuff with some fueling cams, some SNS push rods, and we're going to do a Thunder Max install, and we're going to load a map into the Thunder Max and run an auto tune, and do all that fancy stuff. This is an 04 fuel injected Harley Davidson Dyna FXDX. Pretty dope bike, super, super clean, really low miles. It's Rob Rack's bike, and it's gonna be a nice one. We're starting out with a fueling OE cam chest. Comes with a pump, cam plate, new gears for a single roller chain to convert it to that. Really nice hydraulic billet tensioners. All the hardware, O-rings, it even comes with cam shims, which is amazing because we have to buy these all the time for any other kit, and they're expensive and you go through a lot of them. All the gaskets that are necessary, we're not gonna use any of these because we just cut the push rods out with bolt cutters and we're gonna put SNS adjustable push rods in in place. Saves a lot of time. We're running a fueling 525 cam. It is the smallest cam they make, but this is a good cam for a stock 88 inch. It rips really hard and you don't have to change the valve springs because 04 and older, that's about the biggest cam you can run because the valve springs can't handle it. If you have an 05 and up, they went to a beehive spring and you could handle up to a 585 lift, but this is an 04, so it doesn't have that. We're gonna run the 525. I run a 525 in my bike. I have a 95 inch with a 525, so does Trent. It's just a good off the bottom, nice little ripper cam. We're putting in SNS adjustable quick install push rods. These are really nice because they thread all the way down. And you don't have to pull the rocker boxes off or any of that stuff. You just take the old bolt cutters and pop out the tubes, which we've already done all that. Everything's already tore down. Everything's already ready to go. If you want to see how to do that stuff, there's another cam install video where we did cams in Jake's bike and we did the whole tear it down, put it together thing. It's, it's a pretty good sized video. Everybody's watched it a bunch. Look at this. On the box, no bullshit, just performance. That's ballsy. It really is. But I'm gonna start with uh, assembling the cam plate, getting all that stuff ready. Ah, uh, one thing I just noticed. Does this convert? Oh my God, it does. That is beautiful. Oh, that's just beautiful right there if I ever seen it myself. So, early model. Let's walk over here and I'll show you the difference real quick. So here's the stock cam plate. It has bearings. Roller bearing, ball bearing. These bearings tend to fail. And the big old spring tensioner, which this bike only has 8,000 miles on it, and look how worn that is. Already, also, after only 8,000 miles, look how worn that cam is right there. It is toast, because the single roller bearings in the back, the stock cam bearings in the Harley-Davidson are trash. We're gonna swap those out with Torrington style bearings, which come in the fueling kit, which are really, really nice. But if you come back over this way, I've got oil all over my fingers now. Remember those roller bearings and all that stuff? This converts it to late model style to plain bearings, which basically means there's no bearings. That little rim in there, it just runs off of oil pressure. So this is just floating on oil pressure. So when you lose oil pressure, you really burn shit up in late models, but this is a better style. It is more efficient. And it's a hell of a lot easier to put together because I ain't got to press any bearings. In fact, I got that gym's tool to do all the bearing pressing stuff and I don't even need it because I forgot they do this. This is really, really nice. Uh, that kind of just saved me like two hours of work right there, honestly. That saved us. That's nice. That makes things like simple. Anybody can do it, that type of thing. All right, I'm going to, uh, let's pull some bearings out. These are the cam bearings I was talking about, the Torrington style. See how it's bearing on bearing, 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 needle, 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 needle. The stock ones is like needle, cage, needle, cage. It has half as many rollers in it. This is a much more efficient, much better bearing. We're gonna pull those out. I'm gonna find some latex gloves, keep my hands clean. Ready for your checkup? Fueling lifters. 
HP lifters, they're soaking in oil right now. You want to soak them, get all the air out of them, and get them like pre-filled with oil so they fill up faster when you go to pump everything up. Here's the stock chain too. See how thick it is? This creates a lot of static friction, which static friction steals power from you. So a single roller chain is the most efficient shit you can run. More efficient than gear drive. Gear drive on a twin cam kind of sucks. Look what Trent's got, the smile on his face. He's bringing us something. I'm gonna let you just here enjoy this. What is this, somebody sent us a card? Somebody sent us a card. <laughs> Holy shit. Is this from the original Dynaho? Yep. Yeah. Cruzy boys, Rob Rack said to send you guys a shit ton of stamp slaps. Enjoy. <laughs> P.S. Love your thighs. Yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. Legs and kisses, Megan, your favorite Dynaho. Dynaho on Instagram. She's pretty awesome. She's got a great sense of humor, too. Yeah, that's rad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, for a limited time only, we'll probably send some out in the packages. Stick one of them on the refrigerator with the rest of the homies. Mm, that one's nice and colorful. All right. Grabbing titties is cool. Grabbing titties. Our refrigerator is covered in, you know, like everybody in the stunt world gets stickers made of themselves because that was a trendy thing to do for a while. So, our refrigerator's covered in all the homies that have sent us stickers of themselves. <laughs> it's the fridge of friendship. Fridge of friendship, there you go. They make a nice fancy uh, bearing puller kit for this. Jim's makes one, it's about $300 I believe, or some many, many, many dollars. Or you can go to Harbor Freight and get a Pittsburgh slide hammer bearing puller set. This is about 45 bucks. I've been using one of these my whole entire career. I worked at Trask Performance for many years, and uh, this is what we used there. It's what we used when I worked at Jim Nasty Customs. It's what I've used everywhere. This is my second one. My first one got wore out, so I ran it for about 12 years, probably. This goes in the bearing. Spread this guy out. It grabs a hold of it. You pop it out with, a, with some hand jive. You, you always hear about the, the stock cam bearings being shit, and they fail all the time, but I've never actually seen one fail. Mm -hmm. Look at this fucking cam. Oh, and the needles are like so blown out I can't get the tool into it. it just wore a trench in them. Yeah, and this thing's got what eight thousand miles on it. God damn, eighty-five hundred. That goes to show they're garbage. not really doing much look at the difference in these can you see see the difference between these two bearings small spaced out really hard big thick heavy duty bearings stock trash why not put good bearings in from the factory you know wouldn't that make sense doesn't that make sense and when you buy a screaming eagle cam plate if you do like a cam plate upgrade or harley davidson cams they sell you Torrington bearings to replace the shit bearings they did factory and they knew From Jump Street that they put shit bearings in them And then they sell you upgraded bearings to put in the shit bearings that are in the motor Harley-Davidson Quality nothing but quality. It's actually quantity over quality when it comes to Harley-Davidson, which You know if Harley-Davidson made a quality motorcycle there wouldn't be 400 Harley-Davidson motorcycle shops on this one road right here. Man, and the newer the bikes get, here's another thing with Harley that you guys should know. The newer models, each time a new model comes out, they're not better. They're cheaper. Everything is cheaper made. So when you go from the 88, 99 to 05 twin cams compared to the 06 to 17 twin cams, this is a better motor. This is a better motor all the way around. The later models have cheaper cam plates uh they got roller 
roller chains. They got a little bit better cam plate in them actually. That's better, but it's cheaper to produce. So Harley's very good at finding ways to produce their shit cheaper and then making it more expensive to you. I guess that's business. I also guess it keeps us in business. So keep making keep making cheap cheap garbage, Harley. Keep keep me employed. All this stuff that's on this bike, which I should have mentioned earlier, I'm not really good at this, but it's all on cruisyoriginals.com. I'll put some links down in the description down below. If you want to buy this cam chest, the cam chest install kit, all that stuff will be down in the description. I'm gonna put some new bearings in. I've got my custom bearing installer somewhere over here. Once again, Jim's makes a very fancy cam install tool. I have an old cam for early and late model. I take the old cam bearing that I just took out, the shitter, slide it on here like this. You've got that little bit protruding right there. Now I'm gonna take my new cam bearing. See the numbers? This side has numbers. This side has a nice round tapered end on it. You press the numbers, always. Tapered end goes into the motorcycle itself. Pump this guy full of some assembly lube right now so I can pack it in the bearings real nice. Get them lubed up. I'm gonna put some on the outside. Set that guy up in there nice and neat like. Make sure she's going in straight, she looks beautiful. Hear the tone change from dunk dunk to ting ting. I mean she's bottomed out. Same thing on the other side. Lots of lube. Lube's a good time for everybody, especially your motor. Alright, next I'm gonna throw in the oil pump. This is the pump itself it's also just the same o-ring that's used in the top push rod tube when you put the pump in this should be a really tight fit here i'm going to disassemble this guy lay it out just the way she comes apart i'm going to clean the shit out of this with brake clean no matter i mean it's brand new it's from the factory still should be cleaned out Now I'm going to put this guy on first. I'm going to load this up with some lube. I'm going to get silly with the lubrication here. This should be a very tight fit when getting it in the case because that's how it keeps your oil pressure. There she is. Assembly lube. Okay, I'm going to put that guy in there partially. You really want to pack this thing full of lube. If you fill the gears full of assembly lube, it helps build oil pressure when the oil pressure building time comes. Come on, bitch. That's a good tight cocksucker right there. Lots of goo in there. There you go. It's hard to squeeze the lube out when you're covered in lube. <clears throat> Matt, you come rotate this tire for me. Get, get that out of here and rotate the tire for me. Cam plate. I'm going to clean this guy out with brake clean too. You gotta put the back chain on. So, see these dots right here? Dot, dot, dot. Those need to line up perfectly like that. Short grub the chains. And I uh, missed it by a mile. You dirty bitch, come on. There we go. They should touch just like that. I'm gonna load these up with lubricants because this runs on oil pressure. So if you put this in here dry and then go start your bike, wow, that shit is thick. And blowing stringers over here. Put it in dry, 
you pretty much just ruin your cam plate as soon as you start the bike, as soon as you crank the bike over. Slide down nice and neat. Now you want to double check the front dots. See those front dots? I think we're good. Right now we've got a C-clip, one of my favorite things on the planet. I need a spacer for this guy. It's usually around 100,000, so I'm going to start with that and see how she feels. 30, 100. A little lubricants on this guy. Lubricate everything in a motor, basically. She is. Make sure she turns freely and doesn't have a bunch of front to back play. Feels good. And now we put the tensioner on the back side. Loosely, she stays loose. So put a drop of Loctite on there and then I give her a little puckered lip syndrome. And it blows the Loctite evenly through all the threads. Instead of having just one glob that's just going to push itself out when you roll it in, the threads are already preloaded, so it's going to maintain itself inside the, the thread engagement all longer. So now I have this one loose. I can take this guy and push it down. You're going to have to hold it in place. Get her started. Snug, slide this side down, snug, and we'll torque these to 120 inch pounds. So, <clears throat> on a, a soft tail, it's a balanced motor, it's different. There's an oil port that doesn't really exist and you need to cap it off. On a Dyna, you got an oil port, oil port, oil port. This one doesn't go anywhere, it's capped off already. So we're going to O-ring, O-ring, and then screw this bitch together. to do the cam plate alignment and all that stuff. This makes it so damn easy if you just follow this step by step. You can do this. You too can do this. Fueling OEM kit, cruisyoriginals.com. All right, I'm gonna put a little, uh, little bit of lube on the threads. Not Loctite, a little bit of lube. I know it's weird, but just makes for a truer torque in this situation. This lube comes with the kit. It's ARP, it's Molly lube basically. You can use oil too, whatever you want to. I'm just gonna not even not even bottom these out. Just gonna give them a little to make sure they're in the threads. Same with all of these guys, cam plate, put a finger tight in each one of them. That one I didn't want to use it anyways. Just gonna seat them. Not gonna touch them. No pressure, just thread it in. They're not seated, they're not none of that. Just lightly thread. 10 inch pounds is basically seated. Double check everything. I'm putting almost no pressure on these, just to they seat. Rotate five more times. And I should tell you also to rotate this motor, you gotta pull the spark plugs out and put it in fifth gear, the highest gear possible. 40 inch pounds. 40 is extremely light too, so it's just a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure. Rotate again. All right, now we're going 90. Fingertips, guys, fingertips. Guys and girls, I know that 1% of you are female. 
Rotate again five more times. This is tedious, but it's worth it in the long run. 120 inch pounds now. Rotate it again. Now we're gonna go to the oil pump, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take her to 10 pounds, which is just seated. Like this is fingertips on the ratchet. No pressure. <coughs> Fire rotations. Cocksucker. All right, 40 inch pounds, once again. 90 inch pounds, rotate five times. 120 inch pounds. And rotate it again. Woo! And we're gonna let that set for 15 minutes, then we're gonna go back through and we're gonna torque this to 120. We're gonna rotate it and then we're gonna torque this to 120 again. So while we're waiting, let's put some lifters in. We got these freshies right here. They're chuck full of oil. Build our oil pressure faster. Drop them on in there. One last final torque, which doesn't really do a goddamn thing, it's just a safety thing. Make sure because when you got a little oil back there or something, maybe you squish it out and you torque them on and this one gets a little looser because the oil film, this just double checks everything. Now we're gonna do the cam gears and cam chain setup. Takes a little bit of skill. Takes a little bit of skill. So here's your main gear, your pin and shaft gear, nuts and bolts. This is a gamble. Which one should we start with? I'm going to go 130. Hmm. That is a little goofy. Well, that's a tight fit. There it is. Sometimes you just need to whack it. I'm going to put a little oil on this. That I don't like. Not one bit, no sir. Hell no, fucking sucks. That's, more, that's fucking bullshit. That's a fucking piece of shit. The fitment is not right. I have not had that happen before with anything from fueling, but that one I'm not, I'm not running that shit. Just so happens, I'm pretty sure I got spares. good stuff see that that's how it should go on if you run into that problem when you get one of these kits just put a OEM Harley Davidson one on there off a late model <clears throat> like I said I've never had that happen before but apparently it does okay we put a straight edge on the bottom one nice and flush and this should have no gap top to bottom maximum 10,000 so we'll take a 10,000 feeler gauge here which this looks like it's dialed actually, there's not a gap at all. Man, I, did I get that lucky on my first guess? You don't wanna be where this tapers out either. You gotta be on the flat right up here nice and tight. Dialed. You know what, when you're just really goddamn good at things, it just works out perfectly like that. All right, we're gonna pop these back off here. Whoop. Come on, you little tiger. Okay, just like the back gears. Do they line up? Nah, they don't. Pinch them, they should hit dead on. So now, see where this keyed way is right here? Keyway, keyway, keyway. You line, and go like this. Turn this guy to there. Give the motor a little rotate, make sure they all line up. There's also, see the line back there on the cam plate? 
Can you see it? Way back there is like a little stamped line. Those two dots should line up with that line and line up with each other. So that is a different size bolt than normal, so I'm gonna read their torque specs. Normally it's 25-35. No, it's the same. 34-24. But, also just learned something new, which I did not know before. So when you're doing push rods, you want, say you're gonna do the front cylinder on top dead center to do adjustable push rods. When these two dots are lined up right here, that is rear cylinder top dead center. With this dot down here and this dot up here, that is front cylinder top dead center. That is a way easier way of doing it than, than like putting your finger over. I just put my finger over the hole and feel it go, when it blows my finger off, I call it good. But that's, how the f did I not know that, <laughs> you know? So goddamn simple. Why does nobody ever said that before? How many people don't know that in the mechanic and world? Take this guy. You have to push it up in there. It's sprung. Make sure these should spin in with your fingers, not the ratchet, your fingers. Snug. Snug. You need to poke them to one point. Cam chest is done. Both dots facing each other. Rear cylinders on top dead center. We're gonna put some push rods in. All right, when you're doing S and S quick install push rods, they come with all this stuff, but there's stuff that you gotta keep off the stock stuff. These are the stock push rod tubes. You gotta take this part, trash, inner tube, trash. You keep the top collar, the spring, <clears throat> and the retaining ring. Once again, trash. Trash, collar, spring, ring, O-ring trash. I'm gonna clean all these up real quick. Now this kit comes with all the O-rings that you need for the push rods. You got the top ones, which are the smaller diameter, but thick, thick and thick in the waist. Small in the hips, thick in the waist. These go on the tappet blocks, and these go on the tubes themselves. So we're going to take four of these guys. And some dielectric grease. Dielectric grease is your friend when you're doing any kind of Harley Davidson work. You use it for glue and seals, electrical connectors, all that good stuff. So we're going to take tube, collar, spring, retainer. Lubed the shit out of an O-ring. A little bit on the tube don't hurt either. It's going to go down into the bottom tube, which then, see how the O-ring sits into this place? And the spring and that retainer ring smashes it into it like this, and that's what seals everything. If you've got a leak in here, you've got something wrong. All right, once again, tube, Collar, spring, retainer, lubed up O-ring, get a little bit on the tube, just keeps that O-ring safe. Bottom tube, there she is. s and push rods are all the same length. Standardly your exhaust push rod is longer than the intake push rod. But the SNS quick install is the same length, so there is no exhaust, there is no intake, it's just, it's all the same. I'm gonna back these guys all the way down. Fully collapsed. Tubes. Get back in there, little guy. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna throw the bottom ones. We take these four, and they're gonna go in the tappet blocks over here on the motorcycle. Once again, dielectric grease. They're nice and lubed. Doing the rear cylinder first, it's on top dead center. 
that new fancy trick I just learned. Pop that guy up in the hole. So you want to push this guy up in here and you should be able to feel it kind of set into the rocker arm up there. Just a zero lash. That's the key. So you got no up and down, zero lash. We're going to set this guy up the same in the back. You won't be able to see in there probably, but there's like a C-clip in there sort of thing that holds the plunger from coming out. And it should be touching it. You, when you set this as zero lash, you don't want to have any compression. Because that's what you're going to set when we set the push rods. If you've already got compression, when you do your turns, you're going to be off. I like to give them a nice little mark. So we're going to do four turns. Tightening. One. Two. Three. Four turns. Lock these dudes together. Normally these need to sit for like 15 minutes and bleed down, but there isn't really any oil pressure built up in this motor yet, so they're already bled down. As long as they spin, you can move on to the next one. But you want to rotate the motor like four or five times, double check everything. So, front, front cylinder top dead center, dot on top, dot on top. Okay, I should have done this, you know, 10 years ago. Saved me a whole lot of time. O-rings are in, O-rings are in. That's that, that part's done. Uh, next, we're gonna build some oil pressure. I'll show you a quick way to do that. Come over here, Here's your oil pressure light switch, basically. You know the little red light that comes on up here, which Rob probably doesn't even have anymore. All that shit's gone, which it's very inaccurate also, so I don't use that at all. We're gonna put a uh, light gauge on this. I'll show you that real quick. So I'm gonna clip this, see this right here? That is the main power from your battery. Your battery main hot lead goes straight to the starter. You clip that guy. Test light, touch of ground. Turns the light on, right? So this switch, right here all it is is a ground switch. So your light's on when there's no pressure. And when you build pressure, it engages the ground and it kills the ground so you lose the light. So we're just gonna turn this guy on. Hopefully it's in neutral. It is not in neutral. You put that in neutral for me, Matt. Beautiful. Run switches on, lights on, and we're gonna do this in short bursts because you don't want to burn your starter up. That was easy. <laughs> that means we built oil pressure. When the light turns off, oil pressure is good. Everything's pumped up, and it built oil pressure so quickly because we filled that oil pump and everything full of lube. That helps a ton. If it's not full and it's just empty, it's just a bunch of air trying to create pressure, which it doesn't work very good. You gotta get some volume in there. God damn, that was the fastest oil pressure I've ever built up in a cam chest. It usually takes a little bit more time than that. That fueling pump is quite quality. Uh, I'm gonna train me sides, put the exhaust back on over here, and then uh, put some anises on these studs, put new exhaust gaskets in and uh put it all back together i'll finish up the t-max and get it going
We are f***ing tuned. Hopefully it runs. We'll take it outside and start it in a second. It took me six hours. Six hours to install cams, put a Thunder Max in, and put the whole bike back together. It took about three, four hours to tear everything down and prep everything, get it ready to be put back together. So, you know, realistically, 10, 15 hours to do the whole thing and get it all done, tune it and all that shit. Doing it by yourself, it should take about that long. It's a job, it's a serious job. I can't believe I got it done in one day. <laughs> Normally I would chop that up, but we're filming, so we've just been going hard trying to get this thing done. And I am starving to death right now. Uh, we're gonna take it outside and start it. And uh, hope she runs. We don't have the right map in it right now. We're waiting for some Thunder Max to get back to us. We have an Andrews cam map for a different cam. It's close to this cam, but not the exact cam. So we want to get a little closer. We, we could probably run some auto tunes and dial it in from here, but we're going to get some closer shit tomorrow. But we're going to get it running and checked out and uh, ride it around a little bit. We start up one with the fresh cam job in it. It's going to make a little noise for about 20 minutes. They say it takes about 20 minutes to pump up the cams. Not necessarily though, but you will have some cam valve train noise from just kind of soft lifters until they get fully maxed out. So let's see what she does. and a cam 88 is this thing fucking rips like it rips i had no front brake limiter immediately around the turn yup and limiter just lit it all the way through the back of the parking lot over there had to test it out rob man you should ride this thing it feels fucking good like fuel injection compared to carburetor this thing feels like it's a built 95 with a carburetor some dude wanted to sell us an 04 fuel injected dx when Yesterday, he wants ten grand. I said, "I'm good, thanks." But yeah, yeah, right on. Bone stock, silver, like silver yeah. box. Yeah, yeah we good. just built a fucking DX, built the DX completely, and sold it for eleven grand. Eat a fucking dick. Yeah, man, people be thinking that they got gold when. And why would you call us thinking we're gonna pay that kind of money too? Like, yeah, I don't know what time it is. Um, I think fucking Rob paid 75 for this one, and this thing's fucking beautiful. I, we did, you know, built the front end and suspension and all this fancy shit, but it's only got 8,500 miles on it, I think. Yeah, it's carried. 
So that green one we had was immaculate. We built the whole front end, handlebars, every single thing that you could put on the bike that we do, we put on that bike and, and there's a whole series. You guys can go check it out. It's in our how-to playlist of us. We built FXDX and we did installs of all of our parts. Beautiful bike, dude. Beautiful bike. We sold for 11.5. And that thing had a shitload of money in it. Like, I was wanting 20 grand for their dinosaurs. Out of hand. It's out of hand. Uh, on that note, that son of a bitch is fun. Fun, fun. He did buy this for 75, but he's got way more than 10 grand in it now. So, I mean, you don't buy a money, you don't buy a Dyna for an investment, that's for sure. You buy it for a good time, and that's it, really. It's just a god damn dude, you should ride this bike. I'm gonna ride it. I'm fucking pumped right now. Watch like, this, watch this, ready? Yo, know, this, this motherfucker is goddamn fun. Like, the power band is just so good, dude. It just. It just fucking hits. It just that I five twenty five is a fun goddamn cam. Whoop! Right off the fucking jump, dude. That thing. Watch this. Your call Man, goddamn it! I got brand new boots on. I just I'm slid just my fucking foot down the fucking road. That's why I don't ride in boots. They cost too much money. Well, it's just one of fifty seven reasons I don't ride in boots. But watch this, watch hey, this. hey, dog. Um, so I'm looking at your bike. Yeah. Uh, I need to sell you some more things. I need to sell you an air cleaner cover, a derby cover, what? and a points cover. From Cruzy Originals? From Cruzy Originals. Alright then, f***ing throw it on there, shit. Shit. Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo your brake lines too, though, that whole setup. It's, she's yeah, all... I figured, yeah, I figured you would. She's a little whack, but yo, we just tuned it and cammed it, and my god, dude, I'm, I'm real pumped right now. You already did it? Yeah, it's done. I just rode it. I just fucking ripped limiter all the way through the parking lot too. This motherfucker's nasty, dude. It rips. The fuel injected Thunder Max 88 with a cam feels like a built 95 carbureted bike. It's, it's fun, dude. It's real fun. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm stuck. Damn, I'm fucking surprised you got it done so quick. Yeah, I'm about to go ride it right now myself. Yeah. Real fun, dude. It's real goddamn fun. I'm real pumped. I want the son of a bitch. It fucking runs better than my 95. Dude, I'm telling you, the fuel injected FXDX, dude. That's like. Man, it's I titties. Like, I'm fucking, yeah, I'm stoked on it. I was, damn, dude, I was like, I'd be, I was saying it'd be dope if my seat came in by the, you know, while it was in there, but, yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> now but she's dude, done, we'll throw them covers on, I guess. I didn't even know Trent was going to sell you those, but you do need them on the bike, some nice black ones on this thing. Yeah, slap some shits on there. And I'm going to do the brakes tomorrow, so it's not done. It'll be, like, ready to go, probably. Yeah, I'll just pick it up, like, plan on picking them on Friday. Yeah. All right. All right, bye. And that is how you sell parts to your friends. <laughs> you say, hey man, I'm going to put this on your bike and charge you for it. Yep. Well, uh, damn. Okay, I can knock all that out in the morning. That thing's fucking fun, dude. Wow. So anyways, cruisyoriginals.com. We have this whole cam chest kit on there. You've seen how it goes in. It's really not that hard if you if you got mechanical skills. If you don't have mechanical skills, take it to a professional. Please take it to a professional. It's you really can't always fix your ups over the phone either. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, you should always take it to a professional. But if you feel like you got some solid skills and you got the tools and you want to take it on, that's a very doable job. And that thing can rips, dude. It rips. I'm I'm real fired up. That was the funnest bike I've rode in a minute. I don't like a big giant powerful bike like when it's jerking you all over the place, it's miserable to like shred on. Like something that just pulls linearly all the way through the power band so you can, just a good drift machine. And on that note, I'm Ryan Cruzy. This is Cruzy Originals. Love you so much. Thank you for watching. Peace.